Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Shadowrun Returns. I am the Jabbering Magpie. If you don't remember from last time, we sort of infiltrated Telestrian HQ and um, we got a bit caught. Now we're well in for a bit of a buggering. A metaphorical buggering. It could be a literal buggering, I'm not sure. Let's find out. Ew, I don't like the look of him. Hello, are you going to bugger me? As you approach, James Celestrian III looks up from the computer screen built into the surface of his desk and assesses you. Calculating a cold, a practiced smile comes through his face. He vibes the kind of rich you don't get from Trivid. It's not the clothing or the trappings or the bound before your betters mansion. It's something else, the feeling that you're being categorized. As a resource, or a liability, or a prawn. Mmm, prawns. I have been reviewing the results of your visit to my Seattle office last night. I admit, they are impressive. You have generated a considerable amount of damage to my office complex, killed or wounded many of my security personnel, and cost my vice president of security his jobs. In 24 hours, you've accumulated quite a bill with me, sir. How do you intend to settle your debt? Etiquette Corporate. Once my current assignment is complete, I would be happy to discuss working off any debts to you, Mr. Telestrian. That discussion may happen one day, assuming the outcome of this conversation does not result in your immediate termination. When one is in my debt, they remain in debt until such time that I decide that debt is repaid. There will be no negotiation on that point. However, you have one piece of information which you might use as a bargaining chip in the little time you have left to live. Why you took what you took. I am interested to know why you and your team of criminals fought your way through my security teams up to my private office to access the Matrix and uncover the location of a simple research project. I took the Asia sample to kill giant insect spirits. I find your bluntness somehow refreshing. He touches a button on his desk. Mr. Quaff, please ask my daughter to join us. The young pretty el elf has dark circles under her eyes and a haunted expression on her face. She recognises you instantly. It's you! You're the man who helped me escape from the Universal Brotherhood! How did you get here? Telestrian cuts quick in quickly. Thank you, Marie Louise. You have confirmed the identity of your rescuer and given me reason to forgive him for trespasses against me. She looks hungry for your help. I'm glad you're here. Good to see you're you go out okay, Marie Louise. I'm not okay. I can't sleep at all. I'm afraid that this is a dream and that I'll wake up and I'll still be with the bugs. You can relax now, Mary Louise. You're safe. It's over. No, it won't be over till they're all dead. She shudders. You didn't see them. You don't understand. You and your men, you flew in here. All you do is talk. It's just like you to form a committee, father. I knew that someone had to take action. That's why I got Hakim involved. The already cold exterior of James Telestrian the third turns to eyes. I see. It was you and your crippled little friend who leaked ages to this man. We'll speak of this later in private. Now then, Mags. There are people I wish you to meet. The committee, my daughter has alluded to. This is a rare opportunity for a man of the street such as yourself. I urge you to behave. We will adjourn to the library. I would be delighted. I don't know if that's sarcasm or not. Just behave. There is a weight in Telestrian Library, a sense of magnitude and of purpose. You are no longer in the presence of mere wealth, you are in the presence of history. Well, he could have at least put a shirt on. So, Jamie boy. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Max. He is the elf who saved my daughter and the only one who has faced our common enemy in combat. Herr Brackhaus? 
What does the representative of the Great Dragon Lofia have to say about the magical insect this shadow runner uncovered? Brackhau speaks slowly with a deep and odious German accent. He takes his time accentuating each word, relishing each vowel and every consonant, tasting them as if they were a delicacy. My lord Lofia has witnessed the insect spirit physical manifestation before. Roughly nine thousand years ago, as you are aware, magic ebbs and flows from the earth circling. From piece to piece, over the course of five thousand two hundred years, as the level of magic grows. That was a vaguely Russian accent. I'm very sorry, Germany. Uh, I should be able to do better, actually. My girlfriend's half German, so... Shit. I hope she doesn't watch this. Hans, dear, I love you, but you could babble on forever, and I believe it at time is of the essence. The painted elf address you. Mags, is it? Delighted. The buggy you fought was not merely a magical awakened animal, like a wyvern or a hydra, or anything else in the sixth world. In fact, it isn't even from this world at all. It's the physical embodiment of an insect spirit from another plane of existence. Um, I imagine that moving from one plane of existence to another isn't easy. Correct. Perhaps Das German can tell you all about it at length some day. He's got plenty of time to chit-chat. Now, an insect spirit can't simply thumb a ride through astral space and show up to Earth late for dinner. Dinner, in this case, being ours. Two elements are required to bring one across the void. A shaman and a host. First, the spirit calls upon a shaman, often in dreams. The spirit seduces the shaman with promises of great power. The shaman then accepts the spirit as his totem. Next, the insect spirit requires a suitable host. The best candidates are disaffected and the disenfranchised. In short, the weak willed. The minds are the most susceptible to suggestion, which is helpful in making the transformation. As you may imagine, this is the sort of people easily attracted to a cult such as the Universal Brotherhood. Finally, by performing what has to be a truly disgusting ritual, the shaman serving the insect totem implants spirit into the host, willingly or not. Then it's feeding time. Harlequin is correct. The insect spirit will slowly consume his host, uh, while transforming it into the spirit or an insectoid body, thus manifesting itself fully on this plane. Hmm, I don't like the sound of this. You shouldn't, it's bad. Really, really bad. The initial bugs prepare a nest for the summoning of a queen. Once a nest has its queen, she literally explodes with newly manifested insect spirits. They swarm out of the nest, feasting on all the flesh they can find and implanting more spirits into the fresh corpses. Again, and again, and again. The room falls silent as they con all consider the scenario. Faces grim. Telestrian breaks the silence. This is not an infestation, Mags. It's an invasion. My lord Lofir knew this day would come, but he did not know precisely when nor where. Your rescue of Mr. Telestrian's daughter has exposed the existence of an insect spirit for the first time in the cycle of this world. Then why don't we just fire a cruise missile at Brotherhood and call it a day? You have engaged the enemy, you know why. The insect spirit is only a resident of the transformed host's body. Conventional weaponry can hurt the body and expose the spirit. But the spirit itself exists on two planes. It cannot be destroyed by mundane means. Hence, Project Agis. Her Telestrian's Biotechnology and Agricultural Division worked with my Lord Lofia's former Tomergical Engineers 
and designed Project Argus to destroy an insect spirit once it is released from its host. The formula of fluorescing astral bacterial strain exists in the physical and astral planes at once, and can thus affect the insect spirit. Now that is a mouthful. Did you memorize at all your reading of index cards? My director of R&D, Diane Ravenwood, will explain how a project agents will be used in the field. Dr. Ravenwood. Our weapon specialists have rapidly prototyped a delivery device for fluorescing astral bacterial strain. They created some prototype launchers which will fire Aegis-filled shells. When fired, the shells will discharge a high-velocity stream of the bacteria. In order to destroy one of the bugs, it must be first damaged using conventional weapons or magic until the spirit is released from the host's body. Then the insect spirit must be shot with, astral, with Project Aegis prototype launch to destroy it. So, in order to stop an invasion of insects from another direction, a dragon and an elf co-created a magical insecticide. Crudely put, but accurate. We must stop the Universal Brotherhood from summoning a queen, and we must stop them immediately. You are the only one who has been inside the facility, and you are the only one who has personally fought these creatures before. That, along with your highly effective assault upon my property, indicates that you are an ideal person to lead the attack. Now, what makes you think Project Aegis will actually work? He grins and his red lipstick catches the light. Because it has to. Come on, kid, when fate taps you on the shoulder, you've got to pay attention. Unfortunately, she has a nasty habit of tapping you on the opposite shoulder so that when you turn around, she's on the other side giggling like a deranged schoolgirl. I hate that. Enough. Are you willing to undergo this mission, Mags? You had me at killing bugs. Show me how to use Aegis and I'll get it done. Excellent. He claps his hands as if circus, seeing the circus for the first time. I love the way the short-lived are willing to die even faster. It's very inspirational. Brackhouse raises his hand and Harlequin's clapping instantly struck. There is one final note. A warning, if you will. You have seen the danger the insects represent, but you have not witnessed the shaman's power. The shaman must tap into a powerful source of magic in order to summon a queen. We do not know what abilities that power source will grant. Beware the insects, but do not underestimate the shaman. Hey, don't scare the kid, Hansel. We still need him to go on the mission. By the by, I'm coming with you, Max. I wouldn't mind seeing the creatures for myself. I missed them last time. Telestrian will bankroll you so you can have the rest of the team. Find me when you're ready to go and we'll bug right out of here. <laughs> he sighs. You speak with Harlequin when you're ready to depart. If we should require additional supplies for your mission, find my assistant, Quarth. He's highly resourceful. Oh, fucking Nora. Let's talk to Hans. We did not allow many opportunities during our briefing for you to ask questions, Shadowrunner. You may ask them now. So... How did the insect spirits get here? When the membrane between planes fins, the insect spirits can reach into the minds of a shaman and begin their manipulation playing on weakness and offering unlimited power. If the rituals needed to bring the spirits here are performed. But once the shaman takes on an insect spirit as a totem, they begin an inevitable decline into insanity, slowly losing their humanity. Eventually, the shaman completely succumbs, choosing the contentment and sense of clear purpose that being part of a hive provides. Perform your role, serve your queen, that is all. The lawfare had seen this coming before and knew another way another was coming. Why didn't he move faster? Based upon the previous cycle of magic, the first insects are not due to appear for another 700 years. My lord lawfare believed he was well ahead of schedule. Something's different this time. It is... concerning... Why do you think it's different this time? 
Perhaps it's due to a population of humans and metal humans on Earth being so much higher than in previous ages. As a result, the volume of magic created by sentient beings is correspondingly higher. Or perhaps it is the density of population coupled with the advances of society and technologies that has altered things. Magic has never returned to a world like this one before. The density of sentient creatures coupled with the density of information coupled with a new concept, the technological persistence of memory. Heightens a society's existential angst. Thus more people realize how truly horrible existence is simultaneously. That in itself may be a form of magic. Lothier is studying the question now. So what's it like serving a great dragon? The German man's eyes narrow. Do not misconstrue my relationship with Lord Lofia. I do not serve. Where do the insect spirits come from? As the level of magic in the sixth world grows, for lack of a better world, the distances between the various planes of reality decreases. When the membrane between the planes is thin enough, ritual magic may be allowed to draw beings from one to another. All right. I shall go. Yes, good luck. Okay, LG fills in. May I provide spells or fetishes to help you with your critical quest? Got questions, LG? Speak it. Were you spying on me at the seamstresses? His eyes widen at the question. You mistake your importance, Mac. No, I was not spying on you until Mr. Telestrian's summons. You were beneath my notice. I saw only a customer. Now do you require my magic? Are you really here? Algernon's face takes on a dreamy expression. Are any of us? Yes, Max, I am here, and at Seamstress Union, and at a myriad of other places on to work at hand. Do you require my magic? Who are you? I am a peddler of magical spells, spirits, and foci. Nothing more? Truly? No. Gotta go, Algy. Thanks for being as obtuse as usual. Well, there's Jamie, boy. Let's find Mr. Quarf. Let's go rub it in the face of McCluskey first. You're gonna die, asshole. Maybe. But I'm gonna live first. You'll die screaming. Nice bit of rubbing it in the face of old uh, Twatty McGee. I was listening. Sounds bad. Yep. Thank you for everything. Could be worse. Could be raining. She smiles. It's Seattle. You look like you have a question. Why were you locked up at the Universal Brotherhood? Father didn't approve of my boyfriend and tried to scare him off. Something went wrong and Harkin ended up in a wheelchair. Father covered the whole thing up and li lied to me about Hakim. He told me horrible things. And I believed him. My Aunt Lynn told me the truth about Hakim and, no and how my father lied. She preyed upon my anger. So disgusted with him. It was easy for her to get me to leave and join the new family at the Universal Brotherhood. Well, what did Lynn want with you? Aunt Lynn was very excited to have me there. Almost manic. She talked about the inner circle and how I was going to be at the centre. She said I would be the queen. The way she spoke, it was as if she'd seen God or something. Her eyes close and she hugs herself tightly. It's not God she sees, it's bugs. Only bugs. What it... Was it Harkim who helped you in the Matrix? She smiles in love. Yes, even after my father ruined his life and convinced me to help hate him, he's been watching over me, my angel in cyberspace, Baron Samedi. After we escaped, I told Harkim about the Brotherhood and about the bugs. His idea to steal Project Age so you could go back to the Universal Brotherhood and exterminate the bugs. But I don't know what he knew about it. Baron Samedi just knows things. So what did Harkim tell you about breaking into your father's office? Nothing. I haven't spoken to him since last night. Why? What happened? I went to his plan until your father's people found me and brought me in. Of course it went to his plan. Hakim is amazing. The Matrix. I'm sure you'll hear from him soon. I should go. Right, Mr. Quaff. What can you sell me? 
In addition to Aegis Loader Launchers, we will provide you... We will provide our authorizer outfit you with anything from weapons to supplies to clothing. Show me the outfits. Hmm. Actually, we should update our stuff first, because I know that these Aegis launchers are actually shotguns. So I've been saving up my points so I can be a little bit cheaty and get myself some shotgunniness. Also, some health won't go amiss. And there's just for a special... We will upgrade our little drones. Oh, they get one AP bonus, or well, minus a uh, bit from body, and then put it in to the AP bonus. So, Mr. Tumnus, you are now all singing, all dancing. Right, Mr. Quarf, show me the gear. Ruger ranged Super Warhawk. Oh, I don't have the skills for them. Shit. Any of this stuff. Okay, just show me the... The Guardian from Ares. This is one of the best hover drones on the market. We will have it. Mr. Tumnus, you're getting a cheeky little upgrade. And if memory does serve me well, we will be having quite a bit of damage done to us. So, minus that. Minus the conk. Expert drone repair kit, premium med kit, and we'll get rid of the cavi, and we'll have another platinum trauma kit. Can you install some cybers on me? Show me what you have. Okay. Um... We will have bone lacing, oh wait, plus two armor, plus one body, reset, we'll upgrade to the 5,000 bucks one, that'll serve us nicely. And we will have the universal cyber legs left and right. Okay, we can only have the one cyber leg, it appears. Why can we only have one cyber leg? Never mind. I don't use bloody magic anyway, so... Now show me the outfits. Plus one drone control, plus one drone combat, we will have it. And it doubles our armor. But I look like a bell end. No thanks, I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Quaff. Alright, we are kitted out. We are armed to the nines. Let's have one nice final conversation. Oh, that reminds me. Tumnus, you get your upgrade now, don't you? Oh, 
flange. Okay, how are we going to do this? Um, I need to access my stash, but how? How do I access the stash? Um, if I buy something cheap, that means it'll go straight into my uh, stash, won't it? So I can get the sexy guardian tumnus. No thanks, I'm good. There we go, Tumnus, you're upgraded. Oh, you minx, look at you. You're like a predator drone. I'm so proud. Hello, James. Let's chat with you before shit gets down. Is there something I can clarify for you? Tell me more about Project Ages. Celestrian Industries Corporation had been working on Project Ages for two years without fully understanding its use. Lafir did not want me with the information. My engineers finally met the Dragon specifications three months ago and had just begun production process when my cousin Lin hired Shadowrunners to destroy the lab and the factory, leaving us only the sample you stole. Why was Marilee's taken by the uh, Brotherhood? He paused before answering. The host for a queen is chosen very carefully, as the interactions between the queen and the lead shaman are critical. Family connection between the Two roles is ideal. As you've discovered my father's indiscretion with Melinda Watts, you know that Jessica Watts, the shaman, and Mary Lee's are rate, related by blood. I'd appreciate if this information remained in the shadows. How do I use Aegis? My people have weaponized the Project Aegis formula by creating shells which, when fired, propel a high-velocity cloud of material which should be effective at killing exposed insect spirits. There are more effective ways to deliver Aegis, obviously, but time was the essence, I needed to improvise. Well, see you, Jamie. Alright, been a bit of a talky one this time. Um, so, the last thing to do is talk to Harlequin and then we're off. Now I shall leave it here, ladies and gentlemen. I do hope you enjoyed that. Please catch us next time where we'll be killing the shit out of some bugs. And the Jabbering Magpie, signing off. Chatty bye for now.